Hi, I'm Amy with Rocket Jones, and today I'm here with Jeff Shoemaker, our senior software architect, and we're talking a little bit about mobile apps and mobile app developments. So, Shu, I just want to pick your brain a little bit about what goes into developing a mobile app. Um, I know I use mobile apps every day, and most of my friends use mobile apps every day. They actually have changed the way that we do our work, the way we live our lives, how we communicate, all that sort of thing. But I'm guessing most of us don't know what goes into developing a mobile app. So can you tell me a little bit about what goes into that process? Sure. So like you said, um, most of us are used to using the actual um, application itself on our phones, and that's definitely a huge part of it. Uh, but in addition to that, a lot of times what will uh, a mobile app will want something that um, makes it more robust. And it needs to communicate with other pieces, and there's a lot of things that make up a good and compelling app. Um, so a lot of times, what that looks like is you'll have the app itself, you'll have um, some type of back-end web service that is providing data um, or other information to the app, and then also you'll almost always need an API then to communicate with that um, back-end web service. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's start with the app itself. I think I have a pretty good understanding about this part because um, this is the piece that I interact with every day, but what goes into it? What goes into developing that? Sure, so when uh, a new client approaches us about building an app, the first thing we're going to do is try to understand what it is that they're wanting to build and mm. what all the requirements are. What's their end goal? What's their dreams and desires? From there, we're going to sit down and we're going to wireframe and prototype that and really come up and say, this is what we envision this thing looking like. Once, we've all, once we're all in agreement with that, then we'll go into an actual development phase where we're actually coding and building the actual app itself. Um, from there, it goes into testing, where we test it, make sure it's working, doesn't have any bugs, and then once we're all happy and comfortable with where it's at, then we release it on the app stores. That makes a lot of sense. So I guess that leads us to the back end of the app. I've heard you talk about um, back end development, um, but tell me a little bit about that and why it's important. Sure, so like I said earlier, most of the apps that you're using on your phone, they're actually getting data from somewhere else. So you can think of um, a weather app you might use it's getting weather data from some service somewhere. Um, or you might be using an app like Facebook or Pinterest, something like that that's actually, there's another website somewhere that has all this data and you're pulling that in and actually interacting and viewing it and yeah. maybe posting back to it uh, from your mobile app. So those can be a lot of different things, but typically what those are is they're some type of web application. So they're really complex websites or advanced websites that um, allow data to be put in, uh, they're interacting with users in different ways, but then we're um, using that data to actually feed to the app itself. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so the backend tools manage that data, like user accounts, content, that sort of thing. Uh, but can you tell me more about APIs? What are they and why are they important? Sure. So a APIs are just a fancy term. Um, it means application programming interface, but really what it is is it's a way that we can allow the mobile app to interface or connect to or talk to mm -hmm. the um, backend services, the web application. And so um, if we have a web app and we want to get that data onto our mobile app, we're going to use an API to do that. It's going to mm -hmm. handle things like security. It's going to handle actually passing data back and forth and making sure that you only access the data that you're supposed to access. Um, so it's a really critical part of building the mobile app. Um, and for a lot of people, it can be kind of complex to develop that. So you really want someone who understands how to work with APIs and knows how to build APIs. Yeah, so the API um, is basically a communication layer that communicates the data back and forth between the app and the server. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot more magic, a lot more goes into app developments than um, I or most people probably think. Um, so let's say I have an app that I want to develop, either to help me with my current business or maybe a business venture in and of itself. Um, where should I start and what would be, um, what's important for me to consider when choosing a team to develop this app for me? Sure, so I think the first thing is you want a team that has confidence in building uh, mobile apps for starters and also um, web apps and APIs. So you want to look at a company that can handle that whole breadth. Um, especially depending on what your app needs are, some pieces might be a little bit more heavy on each of those. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to know that and talk to the developers and find out if they have expertise in those areas and what they uh, see as the big pieces of the app. What it would need, how much of a, a back-end web service will it need, how many API requests is it going to need to make. 
um, a developer should be able to communicate those things and help you mm -hmm. understand that. Uh, from there, you also want to make sure that they um, have had success doing this type of thing before, that they've been around, that they'll continue to be around, mm -hmm. um, and that they have not just a single person maybe, but a group of people who can help support the app long term and who will be there when you need them to be there. Yeah, that's good. Um, so then lastly, um, I've heard you talk about the importance of supporting an app. Um, why is support important and what goes into that process? Sure, well, all apps, um, if we're doing this right, are really dynamic, living things. They mm. don't just sit there, you know, you don't just release it and then they you know, carry on forever, although in a perfect world that would maybe be ideal. Um, but the truth is it isn't, things change. Um, as we release apps, we start to understand from our users what features they would like, um, what would be beneficial, what isn't useful. And mm. so um, for many apps, you'll want continued development to happen on them. Um, just to make them more useful and more um, worthwhile to your users. And then in addition to that, all the platforms that we're developing on, so um, iOS for Apple or Android, um, if we're releasing a, an app for Android devices, those ecosystems and those OSs are changing every year. Mm. And so we want to keep on top of that and we want to um, continue to make sure that we're providing the best native support for those clients that we can. So. Um, just even over time, those platforms are going to change. We'll want to stay up with keeping the app updated and, and um, feeling first class in each of those platforms. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so just like I purchase a car and I don't just drive it until it runs out and until it dies, um, I'll get the oil changed, I'll give it maintenance. Um, a support system for a mobile app will keep me current, keep bugs out, that sort of thing, keep me up to date. Exactly, it's like uh, every three months or 3,000 miles, yeah. you wanna get your app updated. <laughs> that's good, that's really helpful. Um, well, thanks, thanks for that, You're it's welcome. really good information. Um, I'm Amy with Rocket Jones, and I've been here with Jeff Shoemaker, our senior software architect, and we have been talking about mobile apps and mobile app development.